I'm sure some folks will still participate in politics, hoping they can find a benevolent ruler to at least mitigate uh, some of the infringements in place now. But guys, that's, that, that's a road to nowhere. It's a road to beatdowns on the street, extortion, and democide, with an even greater loss of freedom year after year, election after election. And it's, it's one of the most vicious falsehoods perpetuated throughout the ages. Uh, you know, the, the, the uh, naive notion that politics can set you free. Uh, and that's why I've been so harsh on the anti-libertarian libertarian party, uh, because, uh, as I've said before, the people are sick of politics, the left-right paradigm, so what do they do? They give them more politics. It's, uh, it's the most uh, uh, insincere and ingenuine thing you can do to a fellow human being. It really is dangerous to be an anarchist, and it, it will only get, I mean, it, you know, as per kind of the, the stages of Agoras and that Konkin kind of laid out, it, it's, it's going to get worse, and then it's going to get better, but, you know, when it, when's it, when's it going to get, start getting better? You're listening to Liberty Under Attack Radio, and now your host, Shane. And welcome to Liberty Under Attack Radio, your home for anarchism in action. I'm your host, Shane. This podcast and everything found on the website is covered by a Bipcot no government license. This allows reuse and modification to anyone, except for governments and the bludgies thereof. You can learn more at Bipcot.org. So I'm joined once again by my co-host, Jason Paradise. Uh, but it has been a while. Uh, it's been two months since we recorded, and I think the episode for Black Market Botany came out Oh, six weeks ago. So yeah, it's, it's been a couple of months, man. Uh, I mean, welcome back. It's, it's always good to have you. How, how are things going? Uh, pretty good. It's been too long, Shane. Been too long. Been real busy. I know you've been busy putting out a lot of content. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's it's good to be back on. Right, right. And it's not, I mean, the, the content has slowed down a little bit because I'm trying to, you know, get transitioned. Um, I don't think I've actually, t- yeah, when was, when I, I recorded Vonnie, the Vonnie podcast listeners know, but I got a new job a couple of weeks ago. I'm actually having to move down to uh, an hour south uh, for this uh, for this new job, industrial electrician's apprentice. So finally got into trade, into a trade, which is what I wanted to do since I graduated from high school. Um, but uh, but yeah, I kind of got forced into high level indoctrination. But now I'm doing what I want to do, so I guess that's uh, uh, that's a good thing. But yeah, so so Vonnie came out late, and uh, the LUA episode, I think well, the LUA episode came out late, and Vonnie. Uh, there hasn't been an episode this week, and this is being recorded on November 11th, so uh, I've just got to do, I'm trying to get caught up, and plus I'm, I don't have a studio, I'm staying with a family a family, a family member, uh, so I don't have to have a two-hour commute every single day, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a, <laughs> it's a little up in the air right now, so if the content slows down for a couple of weeks, uh, please bear with me, um, but, uh, but anyways, man, uh, what's, anything new on your end? Uh, nothing new, just working a lot of overtime. Enjoying my uh my trade, you know it's 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 nice to have like uh, it's nice to have a trade something you kind of fall back on and it opens up a lot of doors a lot of possibilities. And it's always nice to just have a skill, you know. Right, right, and yeah, and the uh, and the money's really good and the health insurance is fantastic. Uh, so I guess that's a, that's that's a benefit too. And and plus, uh, so I, I I one of the reasons I didn't want to go into the electrician field was that the only real ways I could was through a union, and obviously that's the last place a free market anarchist wants to be, uh, is in a fucking union. Uh, <laughs> so so I I you know found uh, found out that I could work for this uh, for the for this company, and they they hire people you know apprentices. Uh, so I'm getting paid to learn the trade, and that's better than I was gonna go the HVAC route, but I would have had nine months of school. And would have, you know, been more in, in, in more debt uh, to, to get that trade. But now I can work and, and get all the benefits and, and, and learn the trade, uh, you know, uh, all at once. So I think that's uh, it's pretty incredible. And it'll speed up my, uh, you know, my path to financial independent early retirement. So uh, so that's that's good. That's good. Yeah, I know, I know you're pretty big on that uh, intensive saving. Uh, I, w- I wish I would have got started at a, a earlier age, but I'm to the point now where I'm just, I don't know. Think about buying a house and uh, going to have to get a obviously get a loan for that. So uh, not too much intensive savings going on there. That's that's com- almost completely uh, completely opposite. But that's okay, you know. Yeah, 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 
Yeah, and what's also cool about this is I'm moving in with one of my cousin's friends. Uh, well, I guess he's my friend too, but I met him through my cousin, and uh, he's just getting into Bitcoin. So he's he's gonna accept. Uh, uh, he's he asked me if uh, if I would pay half half of uh, half of uh, the monthly rent in Bitcoin, and I said, Sweet. yeah, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> So I, that's that's I don't know that's that's pretty neat. I mean to have any even just a fraction of uh, my my rent paid in Bitcoin is still I don't know pretty pretty neat if you ask me. Oh yeah, it's it's nice that when you find uh, people that are in the cryptocurrency, um, Bitcoin Cash man, it's going off, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and um, just now for the past couple of months I hadn't paid too much attention to the the, the crypto space, but. But yeah, I'm starting to watch it again. Yeah, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash went up like was it 50 percent overnight or doubled overnight or some something like that. Yeah, it was like 30, 40 percent. And, and Bitcoin and dropped like 1,500 dollars. Mm -hmm. But it's but but it's it's coming in through the other end. I I just saw uh, or just read an article that was posted about how they 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 think Bitcoin Cash will be called Bitcoin, and uh, most of the uh, most of the developers on the on the Bitcoin. Big, the original Bitcoin or Bitcoin, um, what do they call it? Classic. Don't work, right? It, it's I, I heard they're 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 basically going to shift all the focus on the Bitcoin Cash and kind of uh, it will be the Bitcoin. You know, there won't be the Bitcoin Classic and the Bit, Bitcoin Cash, but um, a lot of speculation there. But yeah, you know, and I and I, I saw too. It was like Bitcoin.org. They wanted to rewrite the Bitcoin uh, white paper or something. Jamie Redman posted an article on Bitcoin.com about that, but I, I hadn't read it. But I looked, I, I saw it, and I was like, "Yes, yeah, things are a little odd right now. They really are, mm -hmm. and especially if you haven't been paying too much attention in the last couple of months. I think my I think my attention shifted. You know, I, I guess it kind of decreased um, probably after that uh, that first uh, that first fork when Bitcoin Cash was was uh, was created. So so yeah, it's been a couple of months. I need to get back into it though because. The mistake I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make this uh, the same mistake again. Selling when I double, you know, my money, I'll buy some of the bigger altcoins and just hold them. Mm -hmm. Just hold them for you know a year or two, just to, just just because you know. Um, but yeah, yeah. Anything but else, man? No, but uh, I was just gonna say. Apparently, this uh, this fork that was supposed to take place. Um, Segway two X. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess that's uh, I guess that's not gonna happen. So. Yeah. Yeah. And which is I, good. Which is good. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's already like you said. What after they did that first fork, it, it's it. You know, it, it's kind of hard to keep up and doubles and, the complexity, you know. and that that would yeah. created a new altcoin, and it would have been triple the complexity. Right. But uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it, I mean, I, see with that first, like, I it's it's I, I still have a hard time understanding this stuff, and that's why like uh, the the my my I guess my landlord, I guess you could say, or the guy I'm paying rent to. That's why I told him I was like, dude, I've been following it for a couple of years. I have a, a good enough understanding now that I can kind of explain it basically. But you know, if you ask me like a, really any technical questions, then I'll have to defer to somebody else because it's 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 you you pretty much have to pay attention to it all the time. It has to be you know kind of like your number one hobby or, or job or something along those lines. It seems. Mhm. Mm for sure. Yeah. It it's definitely hard to keep up with. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely is. Definitely is. So I guess that's all the. Uh, I guess the the preliminary stuff, or I guess the, the small talk before we uh, before we get into it. Uh, do you have anything else you want to talk about, man? Nah, man, I'm good. Let's do this. All right. So this past week, one of our patrons sent me a link to a podcast and was curious as to our thoughts. The pro the podcast is Unspun number 92, hosted by Jan Irvin of Gnostic Media, uh, titled uh, the episode's titled "Becoming the Heroes to Our Descendants: A Legacy of Natural Law," uh, and it features Bill Jocelyn and Clint Richardson. Uh, it was released on October 31st of this year and marks the ninth year of the Gnostic Media Podcast. Uh, I'm not sure if Jan will listen to this, uh, but if he is, you know, congratulations. That is uh, it's quite a feat. Nine years. Uh, the 150th episode of LUA should be released. Uh, it should be one of the next couple of episodes that will be out. So I've done 150, and that's a pretty major feat for me. I can't even imagine doing it for nine years. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, after listening to this episode, I knew exactly why this patron was curious. Uh, it was an interesting discussion, yet there are some major points of disagreement uh, and clarifications that need to be made. And uh, obviously one major, major disagreement, which uh, we'll certainly get into. So to provide a brief introduction, Bill Clinton jo uh, and Yawn discuss anarchism. They talk about how the Bible is natural law, how to return to natural law, and even get into some of the sovereign citizen stuff that we've covered time and time again on this podcast, although it is from a slightly different perspective, one I had not heard yet. And 
I should start by just saying I put sovereign citizen in quotes because it's the there's a, a there's a set of tactics there's a bunch of tactics that are used um, and they all the the easiest way and you know there's freemen on the lands uh, you have a bunch of different uh, different labels for these things but they all kind of fall under the same umbrella of you know the the sovereign citizen in quote um, their tactics so I know that's a you know it's a contradiction in terms you can't be both a sovereign and a citizen I understand that but for expediency of language. Uh, that is the, the the label that I will use uh, in this podcast, as well as any other work I've done on this subject. So uh, I feel like that's probably worth uh, worth providing a disclaimer. Uh, so here's the plan. I've got this episode broken up into sections and ba uh, sections based upon the main components, as well as some supplemental clips. It's always better to hear directly from the speaker rather than to hear me badly paraphrase and uh, probably at some points, uh, you know, uh, unwittingly, um, you know, misrepresent their their position. So uh, clips are definitely better. And uh, at many points, Jason and I will stop uh, to discuss. So I'll start with this, Jason. Now, what were your thoughts on uh, on the episode? Well, um, yeah, it it really had a sovereign citizen feel. I, and I know they they tried to to distance themselves from that with their definition of what uh, you know being sovereign meant. But um, it's still like the the overall feel of it was. Um, kind of sovereign citizens mixed with natural law where somehow the Bible is thrown in there as, uh, as the word. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting take on, on, on subjects that have been covered like many times, but, um, I don't know. I, I, I didn't, I, I think, I think using sovereign citizen to describe what they were talking about in, in, in this podcast actually is, you know, isn't it, is it isn't that far off from from you know what what's actually going on here? I know, like I said, it was a little slow going at first when they, when they were defining their terms, and um, it's a little confusing. But I, I noticed as they started getting into it, I, I started to see uh, like a picture. I started to see a picture of you know, like I said, sovereign citizen stuff that we've heard, you know, or most of us have heard. I know, I know, Shane, you were you you were pretty much into. Uh, into that before you started yep. the, your podcast yep, so you know a lot more yeah you know a lot more about that stuff than i do but yeah that i i just i don't know it, it just it seemed like the the it seemed like the same the same verbiage that that sovereign citizens use or like you said freeman on the land you know there's multiple uh multiple names that you can give the you know give the same the same old rhetoric but it, yeah it, yeah, yeah. But that that's that was my take on it. I mean, I I really don't I don't I don't necessarily agree with uh, agree with the the angle that they're shooting on this one because yeah, it's it's sovereign citizen to me. So yeah, and 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 I, and I suppose as far as for the natural law portion, that's not too different from what I've heard from other people. And we'll we'll provide at least one counter example, which would be, or maybe not even a counter example, just another example from Mark Passio, who's uh, you know kind of renowned for. Uh, for his lecture on natural law, um, I guess it's it's to to me it seems like it's just a different origination, uh, you know, from the Bible, uh, which maybe that's been done before. I'm not quite sure. I haven't come across it. So if I have, then then, then I guess it's not a new origination, or it is at least to me. Um, and then I think uh, what's his name, Clint Richardson. Uh, let's see, Clint Richardson. Yep. Uh, and then Clint Richardson kind of tosses in, you know, I guess some sovereign sovereign citizen sprinkles on top. Uh, that's kind of how I see it. Um, so I, I wouldn't say it, it, it's not wholly, I guess, kind of the, again, in quote, sovereign citizen sort of stuff, but just kind of uh, another element that's, that's combined with, uh, with natural law, which, you know, I guess we'll just have to kind of see, see, uh, see where this, uh, see where this episode takes us, but anything else? No, nah, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right, so uh, we're going to start with, uh, actually, I guess I'll just go ahead and lay this out first. Uh, the core components we're going to talk about are anarchism. Uh, yes, uh, anarchism is something discussed in this episode, and uh, probably not uh, uh, <laughs> not in a way that you would expect uh, for, for the anarchist listening, but uh, anarchism is the first core component. Uh, number two is natural law, uh, obviously. Hold on, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, anarchy, natural law, 
Uh, then there's kind of the, the sovereign citizen element. And then he uh, talks about kind of state citizenship. Um, so those are going to be the, I guess, the, the four components that we're going to discuss, um, the four core ones, and there'll be some other things that kind of, uh, uh, I guess, some, some slight tangents uh, on those. So let's go ahead and get this first clip. And uh, this is uh, Clint on anarchism. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start this now. Does existence exist, right? Yeah. You know, we, we always start there. And I, and I remember that we tried to, I tried to start, I tried to do the same thing you did when I was trying to talk to Mark Stevens. And, and because we could not get that maxim or that principle, that foundation, we couldn't have a debate. We couldn't discuss anything. And I think most people missed that fact, right? Mm -hmm. Because <clears throat> there is a sense of, of, when you go back and you look at the sort of the roots of, 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 anarchism or, or this organization that calls itself anarchism which again we're going by a name as opposed to an action right the real thing versus the group that says i am um just the same difference between someone who follows the law of god or the natural law and someone who calls themselves a christian has nothing to do with each other right um so you, you, you look in the or the the the, or the etymology of of um, nihilism uh, comes from the anarchic period in in uh, what was it France? And then you 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 look at some of the the my favorite guy. I don't really generally get into postmodernism, but because Simulacrum and Simulation is the movie that The Matrix was based on, I got into this guy. Jean Baudrillard, which is considered one of the, the top guys in that field. And he explained basically that the notion of nihilism has, or, or, or anarchy from its inception to now has gone through several changes, mm -hmm. right? Um, the first, when it was the, the revolutionary, the romanticism of it, uh, which, which, when it was an original idea, um, he says it corresponds to the destruction of the order of appearances. Surrealism, Dada, the absurd, and political nihilism are the second great manifestation, which corresponds to the destruction of the order of meaning. So at first, you had this, you know, what they portray in, say, you know, the fops and the fancy dress and all of that stuff the destruction of of all of that right all the fancy pomp and circumstance the dress right all this all those ceremonial crap all this wealth that just gets wasted on such things then <clears throat> political nihilism came along um corresponding to the destruction of the order of meaning which is <laughs> You've got the aesthetic form of nihilism, dandyism, and then the, the political, the second of the, the, the morphed political version, which we'd call the historical version, um, which can also be called, if you will, a form of terrorism, which he says. He says the two forms can no longer concern us except in part or not at all. The nihilism of transparency is no longer either aesthetic or political. It no longer borrows from either the extermination of appearances nor from extinguishing the embers of meaning, nor from the last nuances of an apocalypse. It's, it's a, in other words, it's, it's gone from having some meaning, even a utopian meaning, to a bunch of people who get together and sell pork and, <laughs> and t-shirts and get tattoos and have no real purpose. And, but, the, but the notion of this political nihilism, this political anarchy, the destruction of meaning, the destruction of the meaning of words and how they apply, even the word anarchy in its original sense, when you're reading anything that uses that word, you have to understand that that means lawlessness. It has nothing to do like, you know, with this group of people over here or this, um, you know, what they call themselves as a name, a title, a flattering title means nothing to what the actual word is supposed to mean. And when it talks about no rulers, for instance, the, <laughs> the citation for that, which they never mention, is the fact that there were no rulers in this certain period of time where tyrants came in and just absolutely just destroyed things and, and harmed people, right? That's what it meant by no rulers, but they take the word 
and they give it a new meaning so that you can no longer use the word. And once you take away the meaning of words, that is when you no longer can express the law. You can no longer express anything. And that is what has happened in the legal system. Because in the legal system, every word is opposite. Okay, and that clip did uh, cut off about a half. It did cut off about a half a half a word into a new sentence. But uh, I, that that clip will finish out, uh, you know, in a moment here. Uh, but Jason, there's a lot to unpack there. A yeah, lot. Wow. yeah, I'm over here taking notes as as the as it's going through. Man, oh man, oh man. So I, I guess the. <laughs> The hardest, the hardest part here is is trying to figure out where where to start with all of this. So I, I think probably the best place to start is he mentioned Mark Stevens uh, in, at the beginning of that clip, and I don't know much about him. I know he did uh, Adventures in Legal Lane, and he does a podcast uh, uh, that I don't remember what his podcast is called, but uh, you know he uh, you know talks a lot about the law and such. I think he's a lawyer. No, he's not a lawyer. He's not a lawyer actually. Um, so, but, I, but yeah, I've never listened to his show. Don't really know much about him. Um, so, so the, the idea that, you know, they couldn't get that starting foundation of does existence exist and Mark answered in the negative, I guess, I, I don't, I, again, I don't know much about him, but, uh, um, but obviously and I would answer in the affirmative, uh, you know, does existence, existence exist? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, and you know, many, many anarchists would as well. Uh, the only ones that wouldn't would be those coming from either a primacy of consciousness approach uh, or the, the radical nihilists. And for primacy of consciousness, it's that the kind of the mind creates reality, uh, not that existence exists outside of our mind, that it's, it's there and it exists. Um, so I think that'd probably be the, the first part here. Um, and the second one, I think we should probably talk about this, is he, he kind of equates anarchism with nihilism. Um, yep. but acknowledges that, you know, the, the, it's, it's gone through changes and, and, uh, you know, the, the word was kind of been reappropriated or, 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 I guess, uh, um, used to mean something else, which, yeah, I would, I would, I would say so. I mean, even just within the past, uh, you know, a couple hundred years, you know, the syndicalism in Europe, uh, uh, evolved to the propertarian version, uh, you know, here in the way, uh, here in, uh, here in America. Right. So he is right there. Um, but <laughs> There's also that other aspect where he talked about, uh, you know, that it was I don't remember. I, he he does he didn't provide citations for he, he provided that uh, that postmodernist guy, um, and I think he was quoting, but there was no context or background on what he was talking about. If if the guy was quoting one of those anarchists from that time period, whatever time period that may have been, um, I, I, there's no way for us to really follow up on that, right? Um, and I'd be curious to to know who he was who he was uh, who he was actually looking at. But the the portion where you know the destruction of the order of appearances and the destruction of meaning. Um, and especially that first part, destruction of the order of appearances. Uh, now that sounds, and if we're if we're talking about kind of a, a nihilistic subjectivist, um, you know that that sort of a thing, um, that sounds awfully similar to Daryl and I's uh, discussion on the philosophic corruption of reality. Uh, you know, for example, the the dominant uh, definition of physics, uh, you know, from the I'd say the 20th century onward, is uh, physics being the mathematical description of appearances. So it's appearances. So automatically, I mean, you know, um, yeah, maybe they maybe they, they did have that that perception, that primacy of consciousness approach, where everything is subjective, uh, and you know, there is no such thing as uh, as an objective reality, um, that sort of a thing. So that that was a kind of a kind of a mouthful there. I guess one other thing, and I'll turn it over to you. As I mentioned, he doesn't provide any context or pr pretty much anything, uh, you know, what, uh, pretty much any information, um, and that bugs me. Uh, he doesn't put forth, put forth any concrete examples. He's, uh, I would have, I would have honestly loved to hear more about the who, what, when, and where, rather than just some time in France, Irons took over, right? Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'd like to get more of a more of a story there. And he just kind of leaves out all of the all of the details I find to be important. And considering you know Gnostic media, they're they're really big on the trivium method. Uh, you'd expect for him to lay out more of that grammar, don't you think? But uh, what what do you think, man? Right. Well, yeah, I've, there's definitely a lot of there's definitely a lot of verbicide uh, going on, and um, to to say an anarchist is a nihilist, I I, I don't I don't necessarily I don't agree with his definition of of what an anarchist is because he says it's lawlessness, and that that's that you know that might be the you know that might be how they have used the word, and you know on a large scale, but that doesn't mean. I mean, you have to define your terms, and when I speak of anarchy, that is—I'm not talking about lawlessness. Uh, if you, 
if you look at people like Mark Passio, who's who's an anarchist, an open anarchist, he you know he's very big on natural law, and uh, you know I I support the idea of natural law. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's law lawlessness, but um, you know he talks about the tyrants taking over, and I, and I'm just picking out one little one little bit in there, but he talks about the tyrants taking over, and I always love this discussion with uh with people. Who talk about you know well if it's anarchy it's chaos Ugh, lawlessness nature abhors a vacuum if there's no government one's gonna someone's gonna come take over right well the, I mean the tyrants I mean the the tyrants have already you know the, it's like they're more comfortable with the, with the the evil they know than than to um, possibly look new. at yes yes so. Yeah, it's not really. I mean, the tyrants are, are have, have taken over. I mean, we there is government law right now, you know, and it, basically there's uh, uh, tyrants that are running this show right now. So they're just they're they're more comfortable with the with the evil they know than than the, to actually co co sit down and have a, a philosophical debate about what people's you know what's the law which is you know i i tend to agree i mean i mean i natural law is is it seems like it seems like what the law is you know i mean you you like patsy was talking about you know you step off a cliff you'll die you know right, right. that that's 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 pretty much a law you know, um, yeah, and and one of the the core differences that, and and we'll get into more into Mark Passio here momentarily, but uh, I guess one of the major differences is that you know the laws of nature don't change, whereas uh, you know government law changes. Uh, you know, I mean, changes in law happen every single day, so um, it's it's obviously or it's it's artificial. It's it's uh, uh yeah yeah yeah. Um, but I wanted to mention one because uh, you mentioned uh, you were talking about the the anarchism thing. And he, and again, he quotes that he quotes that postmodernist who is maybe quoting somebody else, or I, I don't, we don't know. Um, but so like, let's say he is quoting somebody, and it's one guy, or it might be, you know, maybe, maybe that he's talking about like the Senegalists in France. Um, I, I, I mean, we, we, we don't really know. But if he's if he's quoting, you know, one group, and like they have this, this is their goal: the destruction of the order of appearances and meaning. Um, that doesn't therefore speak for all anarchists. It doesn't. Um, just as there are diff just as there are uh, differences in the proponents of natural law, there are also differences in the proponents of anarchism. So um, to to take I guess maybe one perspective of anarchism and then throw the throw throw all of it out um, just because you know uh, one group of people or maybe you know one person wrote down in a book that uh, the goal is to destroy everything, right? Um, that's not very um, it's not very genuine. It doesn't seem like they really, you know, took much time to investigate further. Um, but I don't know. What, what do you think? Yeah, the, I mean, that's, that's, you know, we've had the discussion about, um, you know, when people use the word capitalism. And, you know, I've really come to understand the trivium more and, and how you really, like, when you're having a conversation with people and you have these certain trigger words, which... You know, a trigger word for this guy might be a, a, an anarchist or anarchy, but it's really important that you you do a good job to define your terms. And I don't feel like I, I, I don't I don't uh, I don't agree with his with with the way he defines anarchy. So I, I have a real problem with that to, to throw a blanket statement on it. I mean, it, that's what it could mean to him. But that, I don't I don't see I don't see anarchy just because you're an anarchist. I, I don't think you should be grouped into uh a nihilist, you know. I, right, right, and and, and et, like etymologically, it just means no rulers. There's, there's really like there's no interpretation necessary for that. No rulers. Okay, no rulers. Fine, easy enough, right? Um, and I had one. I had something I wanted to mention here, but uh, it's uh, slipping, uh, slipping my mind uh, for a moment. But go ahead, I'll, I'll, I'll think of it. Yeah. So I mean, natural law is law, and it, it can be recognized by an anarchist. I mean, if you're an anarchist. That, you know, wouldn't that be a, a, I mean, for me personally, it would seem like a contradiction because I call myself an anarchist, but yet I feel like natural law is, is something to be taken serious. I mean, it's, it's for me, if, if I was, if I, if, if I was going to adhere to a law, it is going to be natural law. I mean, it's just really not up for debate, but you know, what is natural law is pretty much up for debate. And 
what I from what I know about natural law mainly comes from Mark Passio's work. Um, so I'm not I don't claim to be an expert on natural law, but you know, um, it's well, pretty if much if you're, it, if you're an expert on the Bible, you're apparently an expert on natural law. Right. Exactly. Uh, but I but I did, and that's according to we'll we'll get to that here in a moment. But um. And I also want to point out – it's kind of the blanket statements thing. Um, you know, so all anarchists are out to – like all anarchists are out to uh, out to destroy uh, meaning and, you know, the order of appearances or destroy everything, right? Um, that's his kind of claim, and especially we'll stick with like the meanings here. Well, there are a lot of – I mean I, I, from a lot of the anarchists I've come across, they're very ph philosophical. They're trying to understand things. They're trying to um, – you know, they're trying to, uh, you know – figure out the meaning of things they aren't trying to destroy it they're trying to understand the meaning of of uh, words terms um you know belief systems etc right um so again you, like this so, so this one this one group or this one individual again we don't know uh you know said that this was this was the objective you know destroy meaning and, and, and destroy everything uh well that's not uh that's not demonstrative of uh, at least the, the anarchists that i you know associate with right so uh, i think it's already problematic right from the start with the way that they approach uh, anarchism, and uh, I guess I guess one point of um, uh, so there was a group of anarchists. There, there are some anarchists, and you know tyrants came in and, and destroyed everything. Is kind of what kind of what he said without providing any any I guess any further information. Well, right. if that is the case, and there was you know a group of anarchists, um, or I guess uh, an association of anarchists or whatever you want to call it, maybe it was an agora. You know, maybe maybe it was a, a Vanu association. I don't know, um, but. If that was the case and the government came in and, you know, killed everyone there or caused destruction, how is that reflective or how is that a crit criticism towards the anarchists? And I think he says that and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, that's that's I got got him on that one. What? <laughs> right. Oh, well, let me tell you about this one time, uh, you know, such and such happened, you know, at this date. And so, yeah, that just proves. Yeah. Uh, all anarchists are bad. They're tyrants case right. close you know right, so right. i mean he really he really doesn't cite you know um what his exact example is but yeah i don't think it's fair i don't think it's fair to blank you know blanket uh you know all anarchists are nihilists uh all anarchists uh don't believe in any law um yeah lawlessness yeah i mean that, that's one of the most common critiques and it's it's so uh, it's so easy to, to to kind of refute right i mean um, you know, against uh, you know against government law, um, or against government law, but not uh, you know agreed upon laws, you know like via contract or something, uh, or just on or just kind of uh, you know or just an understanding between two anarchists who are who know that it's who who know that it's uh, immoral to initiate force, right? Um, I mean natural law. Yeah, rules not <laughs> rules not rulers. You know agreements. You know not uh, right. um, not force. So. So yeah, I think it's already off to a pretty interesting start. We do have a couple more clips on anarchy here, so let's go ahead and because yeah, we've uh, probably got about 30 minutes of clips here. I want to you know make sure we we kind of keep her moving, uh, but uh, we are not leaving the subject yet. This is uh, Clint again. Uh, here we go. The, uh, the the true meaning of the word. We we say something. We we're saying the opposite in the in the ears, if you will, of the judge who's listening. So we're speaking from a realistic standpoint. A literalist standpoint, they are listening from a metaphoric, fictional standpoint because everything in legal is, of course, fiction, right? Now you, uh, you, you're. What is the purpose then of legalism? It is anarchy, lawlessness against the natural law. What is fiction but lawlessness against reality? What is you know? You could say that good is what is what is tr what is true and real, and and evil is simply what is artificial, technology, etc. And it is when you start worshiping the image, the simulation, the idol, the technology, and you start worshiping the words and the terms over that which which it represents, the art form becomes more important to you than the real. Mm -hmm. Well, then all of a sudden the reel starts falling apart. The map looks beautiful, but that which it represents has, has taken a turn for the worse. And so the legal system actually draws us in. It does everything the Bible tells us not to do. Okay, so, man, oh, man. 
So, and that's that's already, especially to to to, to I guess anarchists listening to this podcast. Uh, so legalism is well, is legalism is uh, you know out to destroy natural law, and therefore it's anarchy. So this makes more sense now. And I had a conversation with Jan a while ago. Uh, he's like, yeah, I know, I I know anarchists. I used to be one, but we are living in anarchy right now. So now I understand why he thinks that. Um, <laughs> so lawlessness is anarchy, apparently. And uh, so, 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 yeah, lawlessness and legalism is anarchy. Um, no, not really, not really. But the etymology itself is just no rulers. There's nothing, no, no further, uh, nothing further beyond that. So, um, yeah, but, that's. Yeah, go ahead. But by his own definition, I mean, I felt like that was a big, <laughs> that was a big walk around in a circle, like. He he's saying that um, you know lawfare is actually anarchy, which anarchy means lawlessness, which means you know anti natural law. So um, I get a little confused. I I, I don't necessarily understand um, how out, out of you know his definition of anarchy is lawlessness, but then when you talk about legalism and and, and laws, that that is anarchy too. I, I, I'm I'm a little confused. I, I don't understand. Um, it seemed like he walked me kind of in a, like a big circle. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. just kind of <laughs> like, I, yeah. I, I I didn't get it. I don't. It's anarchy, lawlessness, or is it laws, or is it is it is it what? I mean. Yeah, that's yeah. So yeah, exactly. So so legal. Yeah, that's 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 a good point. So so anarchy is no no rules, no rulers, no laws. Uh, but wait. No, it's lawlessness, and it's it's the government use of laws to subvert natural law. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I I, I think there's uh, I think there's uh, an issue there. I, I definitely think there is. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to this uh, this third clip. Uh, it's uh, anarch. It's uh, again anarchism and ruled by language. Uh, so let's get to it. Well, and, and this is why this is why the meanings of these words, the meanings of the words in the Bible, and the meanings of the words in the legal system are so damn important. Uh, Slauson, David Slauson, he said, names are an important key to what a society values. Remember, a name is empty. The name and the reality the name is on are not the same thing. Anthropologists recognize naming is one of the chief methods for imposing order on perception. So we are ruled by words. This is why I focus so much on language and terms and actually getting to the bottom, not of the meaning of, there is no true meaning, but when you're, when you're, when you're dealing with a specific entity like the United States, you don't get to define terms. Mm -hmm. You don't have an opinion. It's their opinion. That's why they call it the judge's opinion. They define the terms, and if you're stupid enough to say, well, no, that's not what anarchy means. I believe it means this. Or I don't believe that that means, no, no, it means this. Well, you're going to lose every time. You have to always learn from their perspective of you. You don't ever say, well, I'm going to, no, I've, I'm going to make my own language. I'm gonna, no, it's their terms. They're copyrighted. They're their laws, they made them. You don't get to change it. That's why I say trying to change the system is a is a is a you know trying to reprogram the matrix when when you're not on the outside of it to do it is impossible. We have to we have to leave, <laughs> and all that means is leaving the name. What is a name? A person, place, and thing. A jurisdiction. I'm going to leave, I'm going to render back to Caesar what is Caesar's, my persona, my status in Caesar's realm. I'm going to get out of his jurisdictions. That doesn't mean I can't walk anywhere because it's, you know, technically public, public areas. I can go anywhere I want. I don't tread on private property, but it, there might be an easement that says I can't go anywhere unless I cross your pro. Right? These are, these are common law aspects that'll never go away right so again the perception is all based on the name right so name means person place or thing jurisdiction government property this that, 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 that. 
And that's how we're conditioned. So, like I said, I'm not going to try to change the system. I gave that up a long time ago. That's Alex Jones bullshit. You're not going to change anything. Mm -hmm. You need to leave. That's what the Bible, that's what the law says. You cannot live next to people who are not like-minded. The Bible doesn't say be multicultural and accept every other religion because religion is, you know, its, it's basis is a book of law. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, and it's either you accept natural law or you're out. That's it, you know, and people, you, you know, get confused in it because it's been converted into a religion. But when you understand that the whole thing is based on natural law and truth, it's, look, you either live under natural law and truth or you're out that's it holy shit man okay um so first off first off <laughs> so how does so 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 how does anarchism or anarchy have anything to do with the united states like how does that word how, how does how does the united states government uh, it's it's oh man so and apparently the word anarchism is copyrighted and trademarked did you know that no, I did not know that. Huh. I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to head down to the law, law, law library and see what they have uh, on anarchism. You aren't going to find it there, bud. Um, my, wow. my, oh my God. I mean, like, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I have trouble how, how someone can, can string together a line of thought like that with, I mean, it, it's, and tie anarchism into it, right? I, 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 I can understand. So if he's talking about, um, you know, like, uh, um, like, like the Constitution or United States Code or something like that. Sure, you don't. You read it as it is. You don't try to interpret it, right? Um, that's that's for the the judges to arbitrarily, you know, interpret it however they want to. You read it as it says on the page. Um, if they define a term, you go by their definition. That's the definition you use if you're going to be, you know, doing legal research, right? That makes complete sense. But I don't understand how the word anarchy or anarchism have anything to do with that sort of, I guess, that that kind of. Uh, um, that, that sort of legal research. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Well, it seems like he's doing a lot of projecting. Um, and, I, man, I can see how this guy definitely didn't get into a debate with uh, Mark Passio because, um, wow. Well, he, he, was, he was debating Mark, St Mark Stevens, but... Or, or um, not, not Passio, Mark right. Stevens, sorry. Same, same first name. I got confused there. Yeah, I, I could see how, how it would be a hard, hard way to you know, actually get into a debate, with, especially with the terms that this guy is using. Um, yeah, it, it seems, it seems uh, pretty circular. It seems th that, I don't know, it's really hard to, to identify or tie down what his terms are, especially when he's doing a lot of, a lot of back and forth that, that you know, the, the government is, you know, the United States government is anarchy. Uh, the law system is anarchy. Um, anarchists don't believe in law. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> anarchists uh, 1K. Hold on. Yeah, the, what, what's, what's going on here? What's going on? I did want to mention before I forget. Um, there were um, there. If you listen to the if you listen to the episode, I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, the full episode. Um, you'll hear him say straw man like 15, 20 times. Um, but there, when he said person, you got to separate the person. He's talking about separating the straw man from the natural the natural natu natural man. Um, so that was that was the I think probably the first. Um, maybe the first, because that would have, that would have been within the first 15 or 20 minutes of the episode. That's the first time I heard that. And I was like, huh, okay, this is, uh, I think I know where this is going. Um, yeah. so that was the, so yeah, the, the, so yeah, the idea is to, um, and he, he mentioned it there, you know, withdraw completely and leave the matrix. Um, and if you towards the end of the episode, I don't have any clips for this, but he talks about how you can rescind your citizenship and, and all that stuff. So, so, the, so the problem here is that natural law has been abandoned and I would agree, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so natural law has been abandoned. So, the, so the the solution is to cancel, you know, you know uh, rescind your citizenship, um, you know, get rid of your driver's license, uh, get rid of your birth certificates, your social security number, all of those things, withdraw completely, and leave the matrix. Yet, still use public, public, uh, you know, public land. You heard him say that, right? He's like, oh, I, yes. I'll, 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 it's it's public land. You know, otherwise, in other words, government property. So you're still in the matrix. You're still in the system. Um, you know, still utilize, you know, public property, but oh boy, you know, no, uh, uh, <laughs> nope, not going to violate any, any private property rights. Um, and then I don't know if you caught this too, but he mentioned that, um, he mentioned common law and he's like, you know, like, oh, you know, easements, you know, that's all, like, that's all, you know, foundation in common law. And he's like, he thinks that apparently that, that apparently that goes hand in hand with natural law, which I would disagree vehemently if he thinks so, because the fee simple system, Kyle, Kyle Raiden and I did an episode on this uh, a couple months ago, fee simple versus allodial title. And 
The Feast great Simple episode. System. That's a great episode, though. If you if you haven't checked that out, I mean, that was that was a pretty mind blowing episode. But go ahead, Jane. I it didn't is. mean to no, y'all. No problem. No problem. So so yeah, Feast Simple is a system of land ownership in quotes. Um, if that that's the the system of land ownership here here in America, and it's it's actually from, uh, you know, from from England. Uh, kind of is brought here from from England. Uh, it's the reason why no one really owns land in America and why the state can come repossess your home for land use codes, pay back, ta pay back taxes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you, ha you, can, you, can, you can live at that property. You can s own it, in, in quotes again, uh, unless the state says you can't. So, so, the, so why he's touting this as like a really good, you know, like, a, oh, common, common law is just great. Common law is fantastic. Uh, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, and how he's and, and, and again, he, he talked about like, you know, purchasing private property somewhere. Um, he, he mentions that throughout the episode. Well, you're going to be purchasing it in fee simple, but you're going to be purchasing it in fee simple. So you won't really own it. You can thank common law for that. Um, so, yeah, if you want to check out that episode, I would highly recommend you do. Uh, it's called fee simple versus a low deal title. The state is your landlord. So, I don't know, man, lots of problems already. Uh, there really are, and we haven't even, haven't even really gotten into, uh, you know, the natural law portion yet. But I'll turn it over to you. Uh, what do you have? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, you can tell the direction we're heading, and it's really starting to look like, and I don't know if you're going to play the clip, but uh, where he he talks about what it, what, what it means to be sovereign. Did you, did you happen to get that clip where he talks about how that's... Um, more it's it, it involves actually being involved with the government to get the title of of actually being sovereign where he's trying to he's trying to separate himself what what i the way i see it is he's going to try to separate himself from sovereign citizens and and the only the only way he can do that is by th that claim there of what his definition of what it means to be sovereign so he he's starting to sound like a sovereign citizen but at the same time, uh, he's trying to separate himself from from that kind of you know sovereign citizen right. rhetoric. Right, and I guess and I guess one I guess one way to look at it is, and, and this may not be a perfect example, but um, so with so with uh, and this is something the sovereign citizens again in quotes, um, this is something that they've been trying to do is, is transfer you know property title from uh, from uh, from fee simple to allodial title. Allodial control is exclusive control of the land. Uh, exclusive, you know, that's what, uh, you know, like the, uh, you know, the, the sovereign, um, you know, the, the sovereign of a country, say the president's, for example, the pre that's all of the president's land. That's kind of what, it, like the sovereign, like that's, that's his entire ter territory, that's his jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So there, so what they've been trying to do is, is find a way to, you know, transfer that property from, from pre simple to a lodial title, but why would they do that? I mean, that's, 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 that's not going to happen. And, and just because you fill out some magic paperwork and, uh, and send it to, into a courtroom doesn't therefore mean that it's going to work. Um, so, so I think what, what Clint is trying is talking about here, we're kind of going off of what you said. It seems like he's trying to do that with himself. And that's what the sovereign citizens try to do as well with their bodies. Uh, you know, try to separate that person, I guess that legal entity, that straw man from, um, the natural born man. Um, so it's kind of kind of similar, you know, like uh, so apply fee simple to a lodial title only with a human being. Um, so I think that's kind of what he was what he was referring to there. But um, yeah, anything else on that? Uh, he actually does. Uh, I, I think he actually does admit that it 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 won't work. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if you. I'm not 100% sure on all the clips you got, but somewhere in there, he he's he's like, you know, this might not necessarily work. Um, you know, I mean, they do have the monopoly. I know you're going to bring up the clip with the right, monopoly, yeah. of course. But but yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's not a guarantee, right? And, and yeah, it's not that, a guarantee. It's not a guarantee. No, no, it's right. not a guarantee. I mean, so. yeah, go in there and 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 you know, uh, we've talked about it before. You know, so you say the magic words, open sesame, and they're just like, oh. <laughs> We didn't know you were gonna. We didn't know you were gonna say that. So uh, yeah, yeah, you, you can pat. You can go on. You know, right. <laughs> they're gonna leave you alone now. They're just gonna. They're just gonna magically back off and and uh, yeah, you go Correct. do your thing, bud. Right, and we'll get into that whenever I get to that uh, that clip that you referred to because I think Bill Jocelyn bring, makes a fantastic point, and I think it shows some of Clint's uh, naivety here. Um, you know, if well, if you just do this, then you're free. It's kind of like the if you just file a commercial in on a judge, you're good to go. You know, if you just uh, if you just send this letter to um, if you just send this letter to whatever agency, you don't have to have a driver's license anymore or whatever, whatever it is. I mean, it's just kind of that naivety of uh, or naivete, however you pronounce it, that 
you know, the, it's it's magic. You know, it's it's the magic. It's the it's you know, it's the uh, the magic bullet solution, right? Uh, the right. silver bullet solution. Um, and and thankfully, and that's kind of how we touted throughout the throughout this episode. That's kind of how he put it. That's kind of how how I how I how I understood it or perceived him as explaining it. But towards the end, you know, reality kind of came back to came back into play. Um, but uh, anything else on that, or can uh, can we get on to I guess natural law, the, the title of this episode? Well, there's a lot of we in there. Too. Oh, that too. Yes, I know. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> yep, yep. You'd think for people that are, you know, that that's highlight utilize the trivia method. You know, like that's what the the Gnostic Media's foundation found. Uh, is, that's what the fa uh, foundation of Gnostic Media is is the trivia method. So you'd think, you know, I don't know. You better be be better uh, <laughs> be better than use collective pronouns all the time, right? Right. Uh, and we I guess need to I guess do this we need to do that. So. And I guess one other thing that I that I noticed, uh, you heard towards the end of that clip where he's like, uh, and people that people that aren't like minded can't live next to each other. Yes, I did I hear that. that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I I I I don't know. I don't know. That kind of seems like. Uh, I don't know. I, I I just wanted to point that out. I'm not really sure if I have any thoughts on it, but. Um, but uh, I, I don't know, just something there, you know, uh, that's why, you know, uh, you know, multiculturalism and all that. Uh, he he kind of mentioned something along those lines. So you guys can take that as as uh, as you will. But I just wanted to point that out uh, if it uh, may have uh, slipped past your ears. So let's go on to natural law. This is uh, this is clip four. And uh, this is where we get into the natural law or the Bible as uh, natural law. Let's get to it to do and that's that was the point that shocked me when i first started looking into this because every road seemed to lead to the bible do not respect persons or flattering titles or bloodlines or you know fabled genealogies do not uh give oaths do not do all these things that we do on pr pretty much a daily basis do not be surety for another which is what pr uh, citizenship is and uh you know, at that point, you, 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 you understand all of a sudden that you have not a religion in your hand, but you have the law. And then I find the, the definition of Christianity in the legal dictionaries that says, yeah, this is the common law. It always has been. It's just that this history has been kind of lost to us. It used to be illegal, unlawful to even speak any kind of negativity towards the Bible because the Bible was law. Now, you can say anything you want about religion because religion is completely detached from what the Bible is. And that's the important thing to understand is that you, you, have, to, you have to forget everything you think you know. And you have to read this thing in a completely neutral capacity, looking up every term in its old languages, Hebrew, Chaldean, and extra. So what is the purpose of the legal law to defeat the natural law? What is the purpose of making us citizenships vessels in their commercial system to take us outside of the natural law to put our hand on the bible which is the natural law according to government not me according to government mm -hmm. and swear an oath to the state which means i'm blaspheming the bible saying i don't want i don't need what they call the natural rights or god-given rights i don't need that i'm a legal citizen i only have legal rights so you lose all, you, you literally lose your place in nature. You have accepted mammon, if you will, instead of God or Jehovah. And that's kind of the, the, the story. And that's why the birth certificate process was created. And we're all, we're all constantly being put into this system. And again, the title of the show is How Do We Stop That? And my opinion is that we start with our own property, our own children, and we say, we're not, I'm not, I'm not going to expose you to this. Because mm -hmm. everything that's done to the child up until the age of 18 or consent is, in fact, done by the parent. The child has, there is no contract that can apply to a child. The child has to accept everything that happened before when you reach the age of adulthood or legalized adultery. Right? <laughs> Adultery is blasphemy to God, basically blasphemy to the reality, nature. So <laughs> you're 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 talking about this this point in your life where you accept everything that's been done to you by your parents. You you continue to sign in its name, you continue in all the contracts, all the bank accounts and everything else. See, that's the point of inception right there. Everything before that. Doesn't count unless you confirm and ratify it by continuing to act as that fiction. 
these are the tender years. These these 18 or whatever, 15 or 16, whatever, depending on what country you're in. These are the tender years where we have to teach our children not to consent. When you reach the age of consent, do not consent. Do not act in this. Unless you choose. If you choose, after all you know, well, then there's... <laughs> I've, I've failed, right? And, of course, that means we have to homeschool and teach the Bible. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a whole, it's a whole huge concept when you really think about it. So, Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, Jason, I'll turn it right over to you to get, to get, 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 get started on this one. What do you think? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, this is kind of what I was trying to explain in the beginning on how um, it seems like they're taking – he, taking old concepts like different concepts you know uh anarchism uh sovereign citizen uh christianity and and it's almost like he's trying to put a whole new spin on it and separate themselves from all those all those concepts that he's mixing together and it, it almost seems like half truths you know like i don't know it, it's it's like these blanket statements where um you, he, he mentioned, you know, uh, not swearing an oath to the state, you know, putting your hand on the Bible. And, you know, uh, these are things that, you know, anarchists are definitely against. Oh, yeah, right. I'm on board you with know. what you said there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> swearing yeah. an oath to the state. Right. And then you notice, um, oh, uh, the, the sovereign citizen lingo that he was using about corporations. Persons. Yeah. He said persons again. Yeah. 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 So, um, and 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 now he's getting ready to 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 kind of rope in the Christian the Christian crowd, and uh, he's 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 about to get serious about the Bible. So um, yeah, it, it seems like he's he's taking all these different you know these different aspects of these certain uh, groups of people, and kind of like trying to mix it into and which is fine. I mean, yeah, he could do that, but uh, like like when we get on the wees where we need to do this and we need to do that. That's that's kind of where I have the problem. I mean, I don't know, man. He, to me, like, it seems like he's talking in circles a lot where I'm just confused. You know, it started the, it started off a little rough at the beginning when he was defining his terms, and and now it's, it's like I don't even know what to think about it. Uh, all right, and for the listeners, uh, I, I, after Jason stopped talking, I said, "Hey, man, I'm, I need, I'm going to listen to this again. I think there are a couple points that I need, to, I need to rehear, um, and I'm, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. So, so after listening to it a second time, here are the, the I guess the, the, I'll go with the least important first. Uh, so the first one, and, and this will be emphasized throughout the throughout the episode. If uh, if you listen to the entire thing, I do recommend you do. Uh, religion does not equal the Bible. I think that's that's kind of interesting, right? Because I mean, what what do you attribute? Uh, you know, the Bible too. Well, you know, Christianity, right? <laughs> a religion. So that's, I don't know, a little strange to, to, to separate those things. But uh, do you think he was correct in doing so? Or, or what do you think on that? Well, <clears throat> what, I, what, I, what I think he's trying to say is, like, if you think of the word religion or religious, I think he's talking about, you know, uh, you know, acts you do on a, on a you know, uh, everyday kind of basis. Maybe that's the angle he's coming from where you do something religiously versus you know um separating it from from the from the bible there i mean because when people think of religion you think of the bible you think of you know you think of the quran or whatever but i maybe maybe he's trying to sh come at it from an angle like um you know religious is something you do in repetition i don't know i don't know he's hmm. he's He's not really he's not really clear, but yeah, I mean, if you talk about the Bible, that religion is 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 something that obviously probably ninety nine point nine. I guess he's taking it back. He's taking right. <laughs> he's taking that he's taking that word back. Um, he can have anarchy, uh, but you know, and when we can't take that back uh, to you know what the definition necessarily <laughs> means to us. But <laughs> right, right. Uh, there's one crucial, crucial point, and this is another point in favor of uh, the whole sovereign citizen thing. Did you hear him say a vessel in the system? Yes. That's well, what I was talking about. That's what I was talking yeah. about, the, the, vessel the corporation. And a vessel in admiralty law. Yep. Oh, yeah. 
There we go. Yep. So that is I, I wanted I wanted to make sure I pointed that out. And then also I wanted to realize because I was I wasn't sure if it was this clip or something else, but I did miss it that first time. But did you hear did you hear him say that children are property? Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. <sighs> well, yeah. Uh, so I don't think much more needs to be said on on, on that note. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let, let's go ahead and move on to, uh, to to Mark Passio here and kind of get his perspective on uh, natural law. And this is uh, actually a PowerPoint presentation that I found on a website um, where, you know, just read some of the slides to give you an idea of what he's talking about. And and, and I guess another thing that I that I, I noticed here, too, with with this discussion on natural law, they don't really, I mean, they, they kind of say peaceful, you know, peaceful person, or actually, no, not person, you can't say that, a peaceful individual, a peaceful human. Um, and then kind of the, you know, don't, 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 that he mentioned in that clip. Um, but we don't really get a clear, I mean, they don't really tell a whole lot about, you know, what natural law is, right? I mean, both of you and I can kind of, uh, you know, deduce and, and, and maybe, maybe, we've, maybe we've done some research elsewhere, but, um, but they don't really provide too much into that do they no no they're not very clear on, on what uh as far as i gather uh natural law is the bible right right that's it uh, that uh, that's what read the bible that's natural law so um yeah i know I, natural law you know means uh, mark's gonna you probably brought up a great clip so uh we'll we'll listen to that um well it's not a clip it's not a clip but um, uh, yeah, I, uh, and guys, for, for this one, I got I got this message from a patron this uh, mid middle of this week. Um, so it would have been around like you know the the seventh or eighth of November, and today's uh, 11 11. Um, and I've been busy, and I hadn't I didn't have as much time. To, I didn't have a whole lot of time to pre prepare for this. Um, well, I I, I, had, I had enough time, but if I would have had like for the episode I did with Daryl on the philosophic corruption of reality, I had like two plus two three weeks and a lot of time to to get that one going. Um, so I, I, I probably should have pulled a clip of Passio talking about it, but I've got his PowerPoint presentation. So, um, you know, that's uh, I think that will that'll work, too. So uh, so general principles of natural law. Natural law is ultimately expressed through seven basic principles. First things, those who know and adhere to these principles possess the key through which the wisdom of the universe is unveiled. Uh, the principles, uh, principle of mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect and gender. And yeah, the next one's uh, page 31. Okay, so natural law, also known as law of cause and effect. Effect invariably follows cause. For every action there exists, an equal and uh, equal and opposing reaction. So, very good. You know, he's uh, you know natural law involves causality. It has to, right? If it's a natural law, if you jump off a cliff, you know, the effect is that you fall, right? <laughs> right. right. All right. So, uh, the next one, law of attraction. The energy you emit is the energy you attract. Energy flows where attention goes as you think. So you shall be. Uh, next one, karma, karma or moral law. You reap what you sow. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. And then the golden rule: do unto others as you would have done to yourself, or do done unto you. Um, again, you know that's uh, natural. That's that's pretty much um, you know the non-aggression principle, right? Um, uh, at least yep. at least to some extent. Yeah, yeah, definitely is. Okay, so. In this in this slide, and I think this is absolutely important. Um, so natural law. Um, you know, that sort of law versus, I guess, government law or fiat law. Uh, so uh, these are the things that natural law is based upon, based on principles, harmonized with due to knowledge, immutable, exists as long as the universe exists. Okay, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's doesn't, doesn't change, right? It doesn't change. Uh, so government law, it's based on dogma, comp uh, complied with due to fear of punishment, and changes on the whim of legislators, moral relativism. Uh, so those would be those are the excerpts I have for for natural law from Mark Passio's perspective, and uh, you know all's all's well there for me, right? Um, so I, I guess I'm, I'm trying to think here. So based on principles, I would say the Bible um, is the is, is is the natural law in the Bible is the so-called natural law in the Bible based on principles, Jason. Um. I, I I can't I, I don't I, I don't can't know. I can't answer that I mean I I mean I was raised I was raised Christian you know um uh, uh, I've I've been baptized um uh, I I wouldn't necessarily call myself a Christian today I might call myself a Christian uh as as far as you know um I like Jesus Christ I mean but as far as uh being religious I wouldn't say I'm religious but mm -hmm. um one one good thing that one thing I, I 
I, I really need to remember what, uh, which was great. I love, I love Mark's, Mark's definition of uh, uh, what natural law is, especially with the causality. Um, but, you know, energy attracts. And, you know, I really need to keep that in mind because, you know, some days you get really frustrated and you're like, man, why am I even being nice to these status? Um, you know, why, why am I being so patient? Let me, let me rephrase that. Well, cause you know, if I'm saying I'm being nice, that might be fake, but, uh, you know, energy attracts. And so, I mean, I, I really, I really like, I really like that. I mean, right, right. Yeah. I've been, I've been, me. I've been digging into a lot of Passio's work and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It's a little, it's a little odd for me because I don't do the spirituality. So when he talks about vibrations and such, I understand what he's talking about, but I guess I just have to, you know, I, I have to dig in more than I, more than I am. Um, but so, so that, I guess that would be natural law as far as Mark Passio, uh, as far as he's concerned. And I, I, I have no issues with that. I, I, I like it. I like it. So, so where does that, where does that leave us now? I mean, what's his, what's, what's his definition? Of, I mean, he keeps saying the Bible, the Bible, uh, the Bible's natural law, and he d and he does give a a, a a few examples how he feels like uh, Christ is, you know, the, the I, I guess the 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 natural man uh, separate from from the the corporate the corporate law or the you know the man the, the fiat man. law yeah. yeah so I mean but but um, yeah I it's not it's I really don't understand when he when he talks about natural law. He's uh, not as clear as Passio is. Passio lays it out, you know. Here's right. natural law, and this is just like Bible's natural law. And it's like it, there'll be some examples and of, of, yeah, as you said, examples of it. But there's no and, and you, again, you'd think you know Gnostic media is is premised like the entire production, all, all the productions are premised around the trivium. So. I mean, he does he does go through a lot of definitions, so that's that's good, right? But as far as I think that you know, since the t episode's titled "Natural Law," I think I think um, you know more focus should have been placed on on it describing that entirely. Um, so I agreed. Guess, yeah. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. Anything else there? Can we uh, get on to this next natural law clip? Uh, let's go. And uh, this one is uh, uh, he, it's where he kind of goes through the definitions of God. And uh, and also the the influence from secret societies on the Bible, and this will open up a very interesting discussion. Let's get her going. Um, yeah, and it's it's interesting that you're um, quoting somebody out of the postmodern thing because because what I find more and more and this in is Bill and speaking. more and more uh, uh, sort of the social shenanigans are going, especially culturally, is inverting the relationship of something that exists in linguistics only versus what exists in reality. Right. So, you know, we can have an agreement with each other. That agreement exists in a linguistic frame. And it's only becomes real until we act on that agreement. Well, it's only ever looking at the linguistic reality and then asserting that these linguistic frames are more real or, uh, or form the substrate to reality. And it, and the, and the, they come up every, it comes up everywhere. I don't know. How, I've probably had three debates today just on the, this one point that they're because they can imagine it within language, then they assert it as real and snip it off from its whole foundation, which is reality itself. You know. Well, so I'd like to introduce to you a, a, what is a, the one thing that really truly initially got me to to read the bible and understand it for what it is so imagine reading any book out there i mean so so going back to existence exists right mm -hmm. when you look at the word jehovah which is the what they say is the supreme being you know all of those terms that that people don't really understand and it turns out that this word is a verb mm -hmm which is the most amazing thing when you think about it. Because remember, there's, there's, there's a Christian, which is a flattering title. It does, you don't have to do anything. You're born a Christian. It's on your birth certificate. Uh, or you are uh, someone who's acting in law. So you're either the noun or the verb, the name, the empty name, or you're the verb, the action, the being, right? Mm -hmm. The supreme being. <laughs> wow, that's a, that means 
what is what is in being right now when you go to the the concordances and you actually look at the terms uh in there i just i just pulled this up let me see if i still have it up here jehovah i.e the eternal the immutable that which does not change in other words nature itself the uni verse uni meaning one verse of course uh, that means monotheism universe monotheism um the 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 name is derived from the idea of being or existence right mm -hmm. so it used to be in times much earlier when you read the writings of even the people in america up until the what the late 1800s instead of trying to scientifically explain existence exists and there's that you actually define they actually the, the def definition of jehovah or god as we, we god being a sort of a worthless term um in the bible they replaced the word jehovah with god but they also replaced every other word king magistrate judge you know men also became god's king god right so you have all these gods but only one of them refers to the supreme quote unquote being of the universe nature itself right which we are a part of and so once i got that definition and i knew to look up every time i saw the word god i had to go look it up sometimes it was archon sometimes it was theos godlike sometimes it was the elohim the plural once i then all of a sudden i had the definition of god which i, I never even I would have never even thought to ask somebody, hey, can you define God? You know, do you believe in God? Do you do this? Do that? But can you actually define in the Bible <laughs> what is the intent of the word expressed? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I start doing that to all the other words. And I find that I'm reading a completely different book than I could have ever imagined. Yeah. Right? And this is unfo this unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because, it, you know, it takes a lot of time and effort to do this is you have to decipher this thing after the Masonic secret societies and everything went in and messed it up. So I guess one one funny note here, uh, I guess uh, comical, is uh, so he mentions, you know, I would have never thought to ask, ask someone, you know, what's the definition of God? Well, you know, back in 1973, and George H. Smith was just a mere 23 years old, uh, anarchist George H. Smith uh, wrote his, uh, his seminal book, Atheism, the Case Against God. Guess what question he had, he, he uh, you know, encouraged people to ask? You got it, and he was an anarchist. Whoops. <laughs> so, so I guess that that's just kind of an example of, of uh, I guess I guess an example of kind of how I, I just thought that was an interesting clip. I thought you guys might might enjoy that or find it uh, find it valuable in some way. But I, I guess the main point here is the you know he he admits that you know the secret societies and, and Freemasons you know went in and they 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 claim that it was altered and bastardized by Freemasons and secret societies. But they still hold it up as this, you know, natural law. Like this is this is how you know society is supposed to be ordered, like via natural law. Uh, so I think that's particularly interesting. I, I can't think of an example off the top of my head. Maybe, um, maybe it'd be like, uh, uh, like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything. Um, but uh, but I guess what, what do you think there? You think it's a little uh, kind of problematic? Uh, yeah, yeah back back to the the whole contradiction thing where um he's going to you know he's going to give you the the proper you know the the proper interpretation of what the bible is but yet it it, it has been <laughs> the bible that he's he's actually giving us the proper interpretation of is like you said has been uh bastardized or 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 how, you know. how does he know how does he know what he's reading is true right um right I mean, right. how, how does he possibly know that? Um, so, yeah, I think it's problematic for a lot of reasons. Uh, I, 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 I definitely do. Uh, so I figured that one, that's that's basically the point I wanted to make there. Um, is that, I mean, I mean, you know, the natural law and truth, right? If, as Jan said, you know, if, uh, if you don't, if you aren't, uh, if you aren't, do, if you aren't practicing natural law uh, and, tr and uh, seeking truth, then, then, then you're out. Well, uh, how does he know that's true? How does he know? Right. Yep. It's Subjective value. Here we go. <laughs> here we here we go. I mean, it's it's like um, you know, some people some people have their beliefs. You know, I, I I do I do support natural law and you know the causality of things, but um, 
I don't know. I don't know if I could just. I don't know if I could just, you know, outcast somebody just because uh, uh, of what my what my beliefs are. I mean, as long as they're respecting, as long as they're respecting me as a person. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't see the. I don't see throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I. Right. I don't. I, I. I just don't. I don't view it like that. No, no, I, I, I definitely don't either. I definitely don't either. But let's go ahead and get on to this, uh, this sixth clip, uh, and it's going to be an interesting one. I'll just, uh, you know, turn it over to, uh, turn it over to them now. So you can become what's called part of the sovereignty, which is quote unquote the people, which means the state. That means you're a citizen of the state, a private citizen. No state citizen is a U.S. citizen. That's the important part. Oh, you see. No U.S. citizen is a state citizen. Again, your principle is United States, Washington, D.C., a foreign corporation, offshore. You have the, uh, <laughs> you have yourself, which is acting as the agent for its, its vessel, its person, its straw man. And you have the state that you, quote unquote, reside in. And that is a third party that you're acting in agency to. So... The state that you live in is foreign to the United States. Therefore, you're a foreigner in whatever state you reside. Your domicile is the United States, but your residence is in that state. Just like if someone comes from Japan, they go through the United States, get a, a visa, and they reside in the state for a while, as long as they have permission. Well, same with you. The, the difference is that your permission is permanent. Okay, I'm going to pause that clip. I want to point this out so it's fresh in the listeners' minds. Did you just hear all the sovereign citizen rhetoric just pour out? Yes. Yep, so you, you got the straw man, you got the, the uh, foreign corporation, the corporate United States myth, and you had to mention the principle and the vessel, uh, the principle, the vessel, and the, and the courts. So if one of the favorite phrases of uh, so-called sovereign citizens, and it's supposed to be to, I guess, uh, relieve debt or something like that, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Because uh, when I was a sovereign citizen, guess what I didn't do? I didn't actually look into what I was, what I was advocating for. Surprise, surprise. Um, so the, the principle and agent verbiage, uh, one of their favorite phrases is, uh, quote, notice to agent is notice to principle, and notice to principle is notice to agent. Um, so you're, I think you're a principal and agent in that, uh, in that statement, along with the, the, all of these other things. So this is just, so it's natural law. Again, as I said in the beginning, it's natural law sprinkled with sovereign citizen nonsense. Um, so let's go ahead and finish up this clip real quick. So that, that's the difference between the 14th Amendment citizenship. Is your, it's, it's essentially citizenship to the federal government. Well, they originally created 14th Amendment citizenship to, to, for Negroes. Okay, the word Negro does not mean black, it means tainted blood. There's only white persons, which are certain persons of status, of pure blood, uh, blood from the kings of England, essentially. Um, so Barack Obama, I always use that as an example because he's a white person by his blood. Mm -hmm. um, he has AB negative blood, which is one of the rarest bloods in existence, right? Um, so... You, you have a bloodline, the posterity, that created the United States. The reason they created 14th Amendment citizen was to give slaves the opportunity to have a the, the protections you're talking about, right? So I'm a slave. I'm newly free. Basically, the, <laughs> to be accurate, the United States took over slavery, okay? They made it voluntary, okay? The, the 13th Amendment says uh, no involuntary servitude or involuntary slavery can can happen unless of course there's always an exception unless you're convicted of a crime okay well guess what u.s citizenship is technically an open-air prison you're a felon okay it's it's an internship um you 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 create the 14th amendment citizen for negroes suddenly if i go and try to harm a negro "Quote unquote," as the as the law defines it, um, then all of a sudden I'm hurting United States property. I'm hurting the person of the United States. I'm hurting the future potential labor capital potential of that person by shanking them or hanging them from a tree, and therefore I'm guilty of a federal crime. But what they did was they left it open. They said, "Well, this is a status purely for Negroes," but. Anybody else can contract with the District of Columbia, right, where the seat of government is. So 
That's where the birth certificate process started coming in. Which is the contract. So uh, all of a sudden, we're all filtering into the United States, you know? Um, that's that's the that's the real story. It really is a slave. It's a it's a pirate co. It's a slave colony, but it's voluntary servitude is what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and and that's why we we we're not party to the Constitution. We're a creation of it, right? So the Constitution, the Constitution says government can't do anything to those who've reserved their rights, but we get all our rights from government. We 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 don't reserve our God given rights, our natural negative rights. We are United States citizen in the positive realm, therefore we get positive rights forced upon us. We don't have natural rights because. Hey, all persons aren't created equal. All right, so yeah, the quite quite a I guess uh, quite a bit was uh, was said there, um, but I, I wanted to play that because that's he's not. So so I guess I'll I'll preface it by saying that Kyle's written about uh, so state citizenship. He mentioned that at the beginning that you can be a citizen, you can you can you can practice state citizenship, and I don't understand it entirely. And uh, the, when I read Kyle's uh, article on it. Uh, it's, it was, it's been a couple of years ago, but yeah, Kyle Reardon, our uh, LUA creative consultant wrote about uh, state citizenship and even did a uh, state, uh, citizenship, uh, case book. So he went through all of the court cases that discussed this subject and he wrote case briefs, uh, on all of those. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about that, so you can go to the last and just search state citizenship. I'll also put a, a link to that in the show notes. But yeah, so so he was mostly he was mostly correct in his in his description of the Fourteenth Amendment and and how and, and kind of I guess the the Thirteenth and Fourteenth Amendment and how that kind of came into being. He was mostly correct as far as I understand it. Um, but uh, but yeah, I guess that's uh, I guess there's there's uh, <laughs> there's that for you. What, what do you think, Jason? Well, I wouldn't disagree that uh, this is an internment camp. So um, so yeah, I, I, yeah, I think he's I think he's pretty pretty correct on the the whole 14th amendment and right basically how we're property of the united states government but for sure for sure and uh i guess one i guess to, to provide uh, so state citizenship uh, i think gary hunt did that yeah gary hunt did this in the 90s uh from outpost of freedom and uh i don't remember exactly what he did under like to, to exercise state citizenship or whatever but um but it requires it's not easy to do you have to i mean he had to pro se litigate in court represent himself in court a lot uh, and he never went to jail or anything but uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of work and it's, <laughs> it takes a lot of work. So, uh, probably not for everybody and especially for anarchists. I mean, to, what, citizenship, even if it's just, you know, state, state where you reside, that's still bad enough. Right. Um, so let's go ahead and get on to, uh, to clip seven here. Uh, and this is, uh, Bill Jocelyn and, uh, Clint going back and forth, uh, on this subject. And, uh, the purpose for this clip is, uh, Bill brings up a very, very good point, and I think it kind of shows a little bit of the naivety with uh, uh, within uh, within Clint. So let's uh, go ahead and get to it. Or else, uh, do you have anything else before I before I play this, Jason? No, let's do it. The only way that a nation can exist, the only way that these legal fictions can exist, is by holding a monopoly on force. Well, right, but if then they don't hold the monopoly on force, then they need to have agreements with other sovereigns that will provide that force for them. So this is the only way that these legal systems persist. It's um, not just a matter of agreement. At the end of the day, if everybody disagreed to follow the law or to, to but you also have to you man, also have to it comes down to guns and bullets. You have to understand that there's a whole other system, uh, which is private state citizenship, which has uh, the United States has no power over its quote unquote sovereign people who created it. Right, so. There's a whole other system out there. United States law is municipal law. It applies only to municipal persons, right? People that are... At the, at the end of the day, any law that's going to have any force over anybody is physical force. Whether it, it, When you're saying that it doesn't apply to their sovereign citizens, what you're saying is that they're agreeing not to use force in that particular case. Right, but, but what I'm trying to tell you is that you can say that all you want... Mm -hmm. The second that you allow that reality to affect your destiny, to affect your mean? steps that you take, well, then you've just created an excuse not to follow the law. <laughs> well, I don't understand he, how you made that connection because I'm not talking about something that I would do. Well, what's your point? Anymore. What's your my, point? My yeah. point is, is that what makes these things have an effect in reality is force. And that force is executed through people. Okay, but what I'm trying to tell you is, again, is that there's a system of honor. For instance, William Penn, he said, men must be governed by God 
or they will be ruled by tyrants. Yeah, yeah and as long well, as... And, the... and God being natural law and truth. And that is the core issue right there. I mean, basically what we're trying to get at is how do we wake up people to natural law and honor again? Because everybody's out of honor even. I mean, that's this is why people used to have duels and all of this stuff. You violated my honor, you slandered me, etc. That was the point of all of that. But, you know, we have to uh, figure out how to get people back into natural law. And it's like saying, how do we get people to read the Bible again and understand that the Bible is natural law and not religion? Um, it, it, it boils down to this notion of the fear of God, um, which means <laughs> not what people, most people think. Instead, what, what, uh, what you're talking about with the, the, the fear of military boots on the ground or whatever, see, that replaces, again, that's the legal system conditioning us to be afraid of this concept of martial law or whatever they show us in Hollywood and wars and everything. So you're, you're, you're being, you're replacing the fear of men with the fear of God or the fear of government with the fear of God. Fear of God simply means fear of what will happen if I don't follow God's law natural law that's, that's right? not at all what I'm, replacing. what I'm saying is that the only way that these systems have any impact in reality the only way that they exist in reality that have any power is the force behind them sure they as soon as a government loses a monopoly on force they become illegitimate they lose control they lose that that ability so all of this ability rests in a monopoly on force Okay, and I want to make one point before I forget. I didn't pull a clip on it. I yeah, I didn't pull a clip on it. But there are times when they do talk about legitimate governments. So um, obviously not anarchists, right? Um, so so yeah, the reason I played that clip, I, I don't think Clint was listening because because Bill said the same thing essentially like three or four times, right? And uh, finally, just like oh yeah, sure yeah, no, that works. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, you heard too that uh, he was he was like. Uh, Oh yeah, I know. I I understand that, but but there is this completely private system of citizenship called state citizenship, and they have no power, no control over over their sovereigns. And Bill was like, "Dude, <laughs> <laughs> monopoly on the use of force." <laughs> so um, I I think I, I, now ho hopefully he kind of took that to heart because uh, you know he does talk about uh, in this in this last uh, in this last clip. He does talk about actually putting some of these things into action, uh, and I want to point out that uh, that Jan was 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 kind of talking uh, uh, a little still a little controlled schizophrenic there. I mean, how do we wake people up to natural law? How do we how do we you know get people to return to it? Uh, you know, kind of that. Uh, well, we, we've got we've got to you know get everyone on board, and then we can have this natural law society, right? Um, so I think that's that's worth mentioning. Uh, let me go ahead and play this last clip, and then we can uh, you know discuss that and uh, begin to close out the show. I'm not trying to change government. I'm not trying to change society. I'm not trying to change the matrix or its programming. I'm trying to pull a few people I can out of it so that I can actually have <laughs> like-minded people to perhaps get some land and, and, and live under the law we, we choose to live under, whether that means building a monastery, moving to somewhere that respects sanctuary uh, type of situations or becoming a state citizen getting private land and being the king of that land if you will whatever the the course I, I take my goal is not to change their system it's not mine it's not yours they created it for themselves and their posterity I want to pause there just for a moment. Uh, you hear he said he'd be king over that land. Uh, even if you're in, you know, a state and you're a state citizen, uh, it's still fee simple, bud. Uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, not yeah not not gonna happen. Not gonna happen unless you can magically find a way to transform fee simple into a lodial title. Uh, then you know I'm all ears. Let me know how that. Let me let me know how you can how you do that. Uh, but uh, let's get back to it. The idea is to get out, you know, to leave it and not try to, you know, operate within it and try to correct a system that right. was never made to be I, corrected. So if, if, I'm a peaceful soldier, if I am peaceful, I'm not in competition. I'm not trying to create some money system that's comp competitive. I'm not trying to create a state or a country. I just am living under, under a law that basically makes it impossible for them to summon me. As a peaceful, you know, law, this is all respected by them, and that's what I'm trying to say. And there is no guarantee; they can come in any time, and they can 
shoot you up, you know, just like they did in Vietnam or any other of the 55 countries we've invaded for no reason. Mm. Or, well, there's opium. <laughs> That's a reason. Um, you know, the, there is no guarantees. So, so I'm telling you right now, my friend, there is no gun to your head. <laughs> that, no, that I know that. This is I, a voluntary system. No, I, I, I'm fully right. aware of that. And, um, but I, I, what I'm getting at is that there, the guarantee comes through that force again. That uh, sure, sure. Their, their laws are guaranteed. And that's it's never going to change. Yeah, that's no, the and, point. I, and I'm not saying it should. What I'm saying is it's a necessary component and actually a necessary component for any group of people to work, work together in large scale. So you have to have rules to follow. You have to have a way to ensure those rules. Those aren't my issues with it. My issues is this legal fiction stuff. It's this linguistic reality that we're beholden to. It's how to, it's, it gets back to honor. Sheepdogs, that's it. I mean, what else can we do? Yeah. And, and any, any, uh, hope of making that like an actual system like that, I don't think really exists unless systems fall. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, and it somehow we end up back to hordes and martial law, you know, or martial, uh, you know, uh, militia. So that was my notion of, of maintaining, uh, maintaining the values on, on, uh, on autonomy and on honor and things like that. Did you, I didn't catch that the first time I listened to that man. Did you hear it? So Bill, <clears throat> so Bill said, um, now obviously if you get large, and I'm paraphrasing, when you get large people, uh, you know, uh, well, he said, you know, the for, uh, force is a necessary component. Uh, and I have no problem with that. When you get a, gr- a big group of people together, uh, you have yeah. to have you have to have rules, and uh, I have no problem with that. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so which is it? Is it natural law or is it or is it force? <laughs> yeah, so, Bill was so making a lot of it? sense. Bill was making a lot of sense though. Well, Bill, not, a, Bill, not on that Bill point, was, but yeah, yeah, Bill. So yeah, Bill had like yeah he had a couple good points there and then that one you know well yeah i mean in, in our natural law society you know we'll have to force people to do shit it's like okay uh i i don't think you understand what you're talking about there bud um yeah that's i i didn't catch that the first few times but but yeah that's uh that's pretty damning yeah but, but when i say bill was making a lot of sense that whole the whole the whole physical law like they have the force so um yeah, so good luck with your magic words. God, yeah. Yeah, no <laughs> joke. Luck. No joke. So 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 I guess um so what what Bill or I guess not what Bill, what Clint was talking about with, you know, find some land somewhere with with some people and, and live under the law that we want to. Uh well, he's he's talking about strate- uh, strategic relocation uh just in a super long and obfuscated way. Uh, so get a group of like-minded people together and start an intentional community somewhere. You know, uh, you know, start your minimal, get your minimal sailboating intentional community going, and go practice natural law on the ocean. Uh, buy some, uh, buy some private land, or, or I guess, uh, you know, uh, get some land, and uh, you know, start an intentional, intentional community there. I mean, that's what he was talking about. But the 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 disconnect here uh, is that uh, you can't have a lodial title to land. You can't. The system's not set up that way. Um, it's not set up that way because if you had a lodial title to the land, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, they just they just don't do that. They just don't do that. Um, they want to be able to uh, they want to be able to take your property if you don't pay taxes, if you uh, don't follow land use codes, if you don't do what they want you to do. Uh, so that's a major major disconnect there uh, in his kind of uh, line of thought and his, uh, his his strategy. If he even decides to do that, I'd be interested. Uh, I, I'd, I'd be interested to, to know if he actually, you know, uh, rescinded his citizenship, uh, you know, uh, got rid of his driver's license uh, and all of those things. Right. I, I'd be interested to see if uh, he actually did that. I would posit that he probably didn't. But uh, that's speculation. Yeah. Well, Shane, all he has to do is uh, buy some private land, d- declare himself king, and he can't be summons. It's the, the summons is invalid. Um, th- it's that easy. I mean, the. Bill's out in left field saying that, yeah, they have the monopoly on force and, you know, they rule with bullets. Never mind but no, that. But no, there's this private system and they have no rule over the they, – they have no uh, no control over the sovereignty of those citizens. Yeah, it doesn't matter, dude. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, no. And, and they're not going to – and you got to think about this too. Even if it were possibly feasible like somehow in, in, in their legalese, somehow if it was possible um, – 
they would either find a way to interpret it to mean something else, or if it really was the case, they just wouldn't let him do it because they can't let they can't they can't have that precedent set. Uh, they just can't. So um, so and, and and then they'd close that legal loophole if it was actually there. So um, don't think it is. Uh, people have tried similar things in the past. I think uh, have you heard of the Montana Freeman in the mid '90s? Uh, they tried to do something like uh, they tried to start their own township or something. Ended up uh, you know uh, uh, ended up in prison after holding you know federal or uh, holding some sort of government bludgies hostage or something. So it was a bad situation from start to finish, and people went to prison as uh, as they tend to do uh, when they kind of pursue some of these strategies. So let's begin to close out. Uh, now, first off, uh, as, I've, as I've kind of emphasized so far, it's so, so these these problems that they're laying out. Some are true. I mean, uh, we're not talking about the you know the corporate United States myth or the straw man and, and things of that nature. Uh, but you know the the problems. You know the you know the, the I guess the root problems do exist, and it's the state. I mean, it's lawfare, things like that. So so yeah, that the problems are there, but the solutions. It's impractical to the core. The, the strategy here is to withdraw from the matrix. As I said, uh, I wonder if he's done these things. You know, uh, cut up your social security card, get rid of your birth certificate, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you can't live in society without those things. You know, if, 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 you're, if you're going to pursue like wilderness Vanu, like sure, you could probably get rid of all those things except maybe a driver's license if you're gonna, if you're gonna be, you know, uh, pursuing van nomadism at all, right? Uh, but if you're going to live in the normal state of survival society and you don't have those things, uh, you're probably gonna die pretty quickly. Or just spend your spend spend the rest of your life uh, uh, locked up in a cage. Sure, sure. I mean that's that's certainly possible too. That, that, for sure. Yeah. Then you can you can uh, you can claim whatever you want. You, that's your uh, st strategic withdrawal. Is is the just like uh, I guess if you want to spend it in a cage or or hey I got an idea. Let's build a rocket ship. Hey, that's, you know? that's, that's, that's possible. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's we're going to build a, a space station. We're going to build a space station. We're going to build a rocket ship. And uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to go, uh, you know, live natural law, you know, in the orbit of space. And you know what? If we're living by natural law, I mean, they really can't touch us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until they send a rocket out there. Yeah. Um, Anyways, anyways, so so I guess one other counter counterpoint to this is uh, so here at Liberty Under Attack, we've been promoting the concept of canceling the or I guess the legal remedy of uh, canceling your voter registration or canceling the voter registration uh, for since since about uh, May April or May of 2015. Uh, it's a very easy thing to do. Uh, all it does is uh, change your 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 uh, uh, your your voting uh, your voting status, I suppose, would be the best way to put it. Uh, not a significant lifestyle change. Doesn't really do much. It just cut, cuts one tie this tie this tie to the state, and it feels pretty damn good to do it. But uh, only about ten people have uh, taken me up on it. So, uh, and that's you know anarchists, anarchists, libertarians included. So, uh, so I, I guess if you can't even get people to stop voting, then uh, whoops. Uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's impractical. It's impractical. Uh, the uh, the what what uh, what Cl Cl uh, Clint is proposing. Uh, he also and and one portion of this episode, I don't think I. Snagged a I don't think I snagged a clip where he talks about this, but he mentions expatriation as a solution, and it could be, sure. So if you were to expatriate from the United States and not get citizenship anywhere else, um, then yeah, that that would be that might possibly be a solution, sure. Uh, but if uh, but he talked about you know going somewhere where they would respect you know monastery or or, or kind of what he's trying to set up. Uh, you know if you were to expatriate to another country, uh, if you were to, if you were to try to get land, he would need citizenship most likely. So um, that's that's kind of what he's trying to like. That's what that's the matrix he's trying to avoid, right? This this uh, this system of control. Um, now there's and this is something Kyle Kyle pointed me pointed or I guess maybe we talked about it on the on the podcast, but this is something he he brought up to me and I thought it was a really really astute observation. So uh, so here in America, you know, if if you're just if you're just born here, um, you don't explicitly sign a contract, right? I mean, it's just a supposed uh, social contract, right? Uh, that no one ever signed. Um, that's kind of the the presumption. But, but if you're expatriating and you get citizenship in a different country, you have to physically sign a piece of paper. You have to take an oath of allegiance to that country or some sort of oath like that. So that's an explicit contract. That's worse than you know this so-called, I guess, kind of a obscure, kind of gray area uh, of the social contract. Obviously, anarchists know that that that's uh, the anarchists. Uh, most anarchists understand contract law and realize that that's that's bunk. But uh, there's at least a certain gray area there. Um, there's not uh, you didn't sign on the dotted line, right? Um, so I guess it just depends upon what he would do with that expatriation. Um, but uh, uh, but yeah, I guess uh, I've got a couple more points, but I'll turn it over to you, Jason. Uh, what do you have? 
All right. Well, I mean, I I, I kind of like the guys, uh, the whole idea. I what I do like about what he's talking about is trying to withdraw yourself from this the system. Um, I like I kind of like that idea, but you know, as you as you were just mentioning about you know how practical are these solutions? Um, for me personally, uh, not very practical. For most people out there, not very practical. And as you mentioned, for someone who's possibly participating in, uh, uh, you know, Vanu, d- you know, the, for them, you know, they, the, you know, there, there are some possibilities there. But just for, you know, for me personally, I mean, there is, I, I just don't see There's myself. No way in hell. Yeah, the, I just don't see it. I just, I, I can't see it. I mean, I don't, I don't see the solutions there. I, and, and, but I do like the whole concept of, of of withdrawing yourself as far as like, you know, uh, not being a willing participant of the state. Oh, uh, of, of course. I mean, that's a strategic withdrawal. That's a, that's a portion on the, on the freedom umbrella of direct action. That's fa- that's, that's canceling your voter registration. It's one, uh, legal remedy for, 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 uh, for withdrawing. Uh, I think that, I, I honestly do think that should be the goal of, uh, of, of, you know, uh, anarchists, right? Uh, um, rather than trying to change the system from within, you know, let them have their, let them have their bullshit, violent, immoral system. Uh, you know, let's go do our own thing over there. Um, I think that's, uh, I think that's, you know, I, I think he's on, on the right track with that. But, uh, but again, you know, it's crazy that the Gnostic media is premised around the trivium and this guy is dealing with some bad grammar. He's dealing with yep. some real bad grammar, and when you're doing that, I mean, uh, I was talking in, in uh, the other podcast I uh, uh, recorded today with uh, Aaron Thompson from Liberty Lampoon. I mean, when you, uh, you know, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. If uh, and, and that's the trivia method put a different way: grammar, logic, rhetoric, uh, rhetoric, uh, knowledge, understanding, wisdom. So if you if you have uh, uh, if you have bad grammar. And you can't put those concepts together to, to get an understanding of something to make some conclusions. Um, your your conclusions are going to be bad, and your rhetoric is going to be bad, or your your wisdom it's not going to be wisdom. Um, so I, I I don't know. It's it's just it blows my mind. I mean they they talk about the trivia method all the time. That's 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 kind of their thing, right? That's that, that's their thing. And he's dealing with a lot of bad grammar, and uh, and it, and it's showing. But uh, uh, anything else there? No man. Uh, just uh, appreciate. You having me on the show? Um, well, hey, I'm not yeah. done, man. Oh, yep, couple more, couple more points here. So, um, oh, okay, yeah. So, so they they also openly admit that this would require everyone to adopt a version of natural law. Now, uh, Clint did add the caveat caveat at the end that he's not trying to do that. He's just trying to save the few that he can. Um, so, you know, at the start or but earlier on when Jan kind of made that that comment about uh, well, how, well, we need to wake people up to to natural law and get them practicing it again. Uh, well, it's collective movementism if that, if that's the objective. Um, next, I think this is a really good point to, to, to end, out, end out on as, as far as a, a short discussion. Um, so obviously they're vehemently against the idea of no government uh, or anarchism and advocate a return to natural law. And as, we, as I you know, discovered after listening to that portion for a third time, uh, yeah, so apparently Bill Jocelyn's fine with the force of government, right? Um, or force, I mean, what enti- entity is going to have that monopoly on force? Because, you know, uh, that's kind of what he was alluding to, right? Mm-hmm. So they want that, this return to natural law. So what sort of government do they wish to come into fruition? Uh, now, the Bible is natural law, right, uh, according to them. So do they want a theocracy? Well, no, 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 they, they, they can't. <laughs> they can't because the Bible and religion are two different things, right? So that wouldn't be a um, – I, I guess that, that doesn't seem like it would be the ideal version of government for them, right? So I, I guess that, that's just kind of a maybe, maybe a rhetorical question. But uh, so what government are they, are they wanting here? <laughs> are they wanting like, uh, uh, you know, the, obviously the – are, are they want to return to the Constitution, to the Articles of Confederation? I mean, what, uh, what, what are we, what are we talking about here? Well, they're not, they're not very clear on, especially on this episode. But they are uh, bad they are, rhetoric. There's not a lot of clarity. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure they're constitutionalists. If, uh, you know, I think they've been pretty clear on some of their other shows that they're they're actually constitutionalists and they are big. Big fans of the United States government. Not, I mean, not everything the United States government does, but maybe they could take it back. 1787 version of it. Yeah. 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 I, I honestly don't listen to a whole lot of uh, Gnostic media. He's been on. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Peace Revolution, the Peace Peace Revolution Radio with uh, Richard Grove back from like 2009, 2010. 
and uh, Jan is a pretty frequent guest on there. But uh, yeah, I haven't listened to. I've maybe listened to a handful of episodes of Gnostic Media. Um, so I, I yeah. So I guess that's another another point there. I mean, maybe some of these answers are provided in other episodes. That's certainly possible. Um, but uh, but but still, uh, I think uh, you know that there could have been a lot more clarity. Um, I think uh, I think Clinton needs to uh, you know do some some grammar work on the uh, on the whole uh, sovereign citizen sort of stuff. Uh, and if he uh, if he has proof of that, uh, Kyle Ridden wrote an article uh, uh, quite a quite a while ago. It's uh, the Pathetics. Uh, I don't remember what the it's uh, tinyurl.com forward slash only on papers. The short link to the article, but that's where Kyle destroys um, this 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 uh, like uh, all of these tactics that uh, that are used and kind of the myths associated with it. And uh, he has a list of questions of like ten yeah it's like ten questions at the bottom that he wants answers to. And this article has been out for like four years. Uh, he wants some answers on this, and if he's wrong, he's he'll, he's fine with being wrong. But no one has even approached him uh, to answer any of those questions. So uh, I think that's pretty demonstrative of it. And uh, hopefully, you know, if uh, if Clint, uh, you know, uh, does listen to this podcast somehow, uh, I would I would hope that uh, you know if uh, if if uh, in counter uh, information is provided to, to some of his claims, I, I would hope that he would uh, you know correct those in pursuance of truth. Um, but uh, obviously, we'll we'll kind of have to see uh, how all that goes, how all that goes. But uh, anything else, man? Um, no, uh, yeah, this time, yeah, thanks for having me on, Shane. <laughs> not a problem, not a problem, and I appreciate you coming on to, uh, to chat with me about this. I was going to do a solo episode for this, but I don't know, that would have been a monster to do myself, so I appreciate you giving me some time to breathe and think. Uh, it's always, uh, always appreciated. Uh, yeah, uh, thank, yeah, like I said, thanks for having me on, dude, it was definitely fun. Uh, when you, uh, approached me with the subject last night and told me to check out the podcast, as soon as I started listening to that thing, I was like, "Oh yeah, we we're we're getting this done." Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know our our patron, you know, so if you're if you're if you're a patron on Patreon, well, hell, if even if you aren't, I probably will we'll probably still accommodate for episode episode ideas. But uh, but regardless, you know, if you're especially if you're a patron uh, on Patreon, Liberty Under or I guess, damn it, Patreon.com forward slash Liberty Under Attack. Uh, if you're a patron there and you uh, you have any uh, you know topics you want us to discuss, such as we've done tonight or episodes you want us to uh, respond to. Uh, we don't, we're always more than happy to take requests like that. And uh, as, as always, uh, you know, uh, we'll have, this podcast wouldn't exist without you. So we need that uh, market feedback. And, uh, you know, we need you to, we, I mean, we, yeah, we, we do need you to want to wanna listen to the podcast. So if you have any topics that you want us to discuss, uh, please let us know. Shane at LibertyUnderAttack.com. Or you can message the Facebook page or uh, me on my personal page on Fascist Book. Uh, so with that said, uh, I think that's uh, that's all we have.